Hi, everybody. Chris Mason here with the Nashville Predators broadcaster for Fox Sports Tennessee. I'm joined by my counterpart for Fox Arizona, uh, Tyson Nash. We got a big series coming up, Coyotes versus Preds. Nasher, let's get into it. Anybody in particular, the guy's been back for a while, stood out to you during training camp so far? Well, I got to tell you, I'm sure a lot like Nashville, the boys are excited to be back on the ice, absolutely buzzing, flying around, all smiles. Um, there's been a lot of co uh, talk, excuse me, from Coach Rick Tockett, uh, of the play of Clayton Keller. Uh, he's loved what he saw of, out of uh, Clayton. Uh, Phil Kessel uh, is, is flying out there on the ice. He's uh, talked a lot about his health uh, during the regular season, wasn't 100%, uh, tried to keep that Ironman streak going. Um, he did, but I, I think it really hurt his play. So he's looking to, to make amends for that. Oliver Ekman Larson uh, has really taken control of this team uh, since they've come back, uh, you know, really as the new leader uh, with that captain, captaincy on his jersey. I think he kind of, you know, struggled uh, this season, as we all know. But he's looking to, again, a lot like Kessel, make amends. Taylor Hall's flying out there. Uh, but the guy that's really stood out to me has been Brad Richardson. This guy's a, a real leader, a veteran player. Uh, he's the, we've had a couple scrimmages now here in Arizona. He's been running guys over, finishing every check, really trying to set the tone and I think wake these guys up so that they'll be ready uh, in training camp. So uh, that's been the buzz here in Arizona. How about uh, how about in Nashville? Any surprises uh, for you? I know it's kind of been like a black hole over there. No, uh, not a lot of media coverage, not many uh, articles. Uh, we're trying to figure things out here in Arizona, but it's been pretty tight lipped. Well, let me give you a little peek behind the curtain here, a little uh, inside information, if you will. But uh, no, I, it's the same thing. I, I think, uh, you know, the, the Coyotes and, and Preds had a very similar season. I know the Coyotes got off to a great start. And then at, at the end, kind of tail, the, the Preds were kind of opposite. They, they got off to a slow start and they, start, they finished strong there before the shutdown. But um, a lot of their big players, Ryan Johansson, Victor Arvidsson was hurt for a bit. Philip Forsberg, Matt Duchesne had, you know, kind of subpar seasons. And I think those guys... Uh, for them to have the opportunity to come back and start fresh, it's it's almost like they've had a complete off season to, you know, just get rid of that kind of uh, that mental weight and stress that you carry around during the season, and, and they look rejuvenated. And Philip Forsberg, in particular, um, I, I still think in, in terms of his career, he, he the best is yet to come for him. He's such a, a competitor, and he just has so much expectation on his performance. Uh, he's come back and he's looked really hungry, and I think they've. Uh, Coach Hines has put back, uh, they call it the Jofa line. They've got their name is, their line is named. So, you know, it's a big deal, but it's Victor Arvidsson, Ryan Johansson in the middle and Philip Forsberg. And they've had a lot of success in the past. This season didn't go so well for them at times when they were put back together, but they, they're back together now. They're looking good in cap and you could just tell that familiarity with each other um, is paying off early. So see how that move shakes, uh, shakes out for the Preds but like you said everyone's hungry and just to see the guys back you know on the ice and feeling alive and the smiles and and chirping each other and having fun it, it is great but I look for those guys to really lead the way um you mentioned some really good players I uh, lead a lot of new faces for the Coyotes this year who's one guy that you know might be uh, kind of fly under the radar when you're looking at the Coyotes roster you mentioned Richardson is there anyone out there you got a lot of, a lot of nice young players that are really kind of coming into their own well, you're right. I mean, everyone knows the Halls and the Oliver Ekman Larsons and the Castles. But uh, for me, the interesting part, you know, when you look at playoffs and, and what it's about, uh, you look at Detroit all those years. Yeah, we all knew Fedorov. We all, all knew Iserman. Uh, and those guys were the, the leaders in the backbone of those teams. But it was also the Drapers and the Mulpies and the McCartys that those guys have to have an impact in a series. And for me, um, you know, two guys... Uh, that stand out for me and a guy that it's a funny story Taylor Hall when he came to the Arizona Coyotes from New Jersey uh, Connor Garland was was on his wing and he was like who's this guy I've never really even heard of this guy and I, I think he's a guy that um, is going to have a big impact in this series he scored 22 goals uh, this year for the Coyotes that led them uh, offensively um, low scoring teams both of these teams Nashville uh, and, the, and the Coyotes so a guy like Connor Garland, I think, is going to be uh, a guy to, to watch out for. But the other guy for me, and everyone talks about speed and skill in our game, Mason, and you know that, you hear it all the time. Uh, but I think that's, that's big in the regular season. We all know in the playoffs, you still have to play that big, heavy game. So Lawson Krause is, is my guy. I think he's going to be a monster in the playoffs. He's going to be very tough to contain. Uh, for, for Nashville, as good as your D is, he's a big body. Uh, I think he's like 6'4", 230 pounds. 
and the kid can move. So that type of player in the playoffs is, is a dangerous player. How about, uh, how about for you guys? I know, again, Yossi, everyone knows about him. Up for the Norris Trophy this year. Uh, Forsberg, Duchesne, uh, you guys have a lot of talent there. Who's your guy? Yeah, you know, good, uh, great insight there, Nasher. Um, you know, obviously, yeah, Yossi and, and those guys, we all know those guys. But, um, you know, outside of, of the Predators world, uh, this season are probably our most consistent line. I look at this line because they, they really were consistent all year. And, and without them, I don't know if the Preds would be in a playoff position. But you have Nick Benino, Craig Smith, and Rocco Grimaldi. And, you know, Nick Benino is a veteran guy. He's been in the, uh, you know, Stanley. He's won some Stanley Cups. He's got that veteran presence and that leadership. Rocco Grimaldi's really made a name for himself the last couple of years. He's five foot nothing. Uh, just full of heart, just, you know, big, big old heart goes in there. He's willing to take on anybody. Um, and he's, he's got that playoff mentality and, and he's, he's, he's fearless. And uh, he's also really stepped up his game offensively. And Craig Smith is a veteran guy. He can lock him in for 20 goals. But again, he's that type of player that's going to get in on the forecheck. And, and you mentioned the importance of a playoff hockey and uh, getting into that type of hockey game. And I think that line has been really effective for them. So, uh, for Coyote fans, you might not be as familiar with those guys um, as you are some of the superstar players. And then on the back end, they've had a couple guys that really got an opportunity. Um, Jared Tenardi, you remember, you probably played against his dad, Mark Tenardi. Um, he's like that, except uh, he's big and mean, except he, he's got a little more skill and he's got a little more finesse. But, but he is that big, heavy presence that I think the Predators really lack the last couple seasons. Um, he's got a little bit of a mean streak, and you can just tell that – uh, players know when he's out there and play a little differently around uh, around the net area when he's out there. So I think he's kind of a, a sleeper guy that could make that big impact that you were talking about, similar to, to some of the guys that you mentioned uh, for the Predators. So he's a guy to keep an eye on. Um, one of the biggest things, I think, that when I look at the parallels between this team, uh, they're very similar uh, in the seasons they had and the way that they're built, but they both have probably one of the best one-two punches in goal. I know you Kemper and Ranta, we have Rene and Soros. What do you like? You know, what do you like about your guys? I, I know Kemper's been probably the team's MVP this year. Ranta not far behind statistically. Both of those guys were at the top of the, you know, at the top of the league in terms of their statistical numbers. What's the talk out of camp there? Are they, have they chosen a guy or is, is this going to be uh, something that's decided during camp? Well, a typical goalie, eh? Wants to talk all yeah. about goalies. Got to get them in there somehow. Holy cow. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. I mean, I think all eyes are going to be on this series in particular just because of the goaltending matchup. Um, you know, Darcy Kemper, Auntie Ranta, two of the best in my mind, uh, you know, in, in the league. I think Darcy Kemper was fourth uh, in goals against, and I think he was third in save percentage as far as numbers go. And Auntie Ranta, uh, I don't think was far behind. I think he finished eighth in save percentage. So, um, you, you love those numbers, but again, as we all know, that those numbers all go away. Everyone starts fresh uh, when the playoffs kick off, especially in a best of five series where I think goaltending is, uh, you know, and I'll go with you on this one. Goaltending becomes that much more important. Um, you know, a soft goal here or there is, is, is really going to hurt uh, one of these teams. But uh, I think the guys in front of the, the goaltenders, more importantly, they feel very confident uh, with whoever goes. Uh, I got to think it's going to be Darcy, Kemp, uh, Darcy Kemper uh, to start things off. He's healthy. Both goalies are healthy. They had uh, some injuries this year, um, and, and you saw the team struggle when, uh, when they went down. So uh, I can't wait to get this series kicked off. And, and again, I got to ask you, uh, you know, what's behind that curtain? We haven't even heard who's going to be the starting goaltender uh, for you guys there in Nashville. Uh, and, and I guess, you know, on another question for you, is you got to think they're going to go with Pecorine, the veteran goaltender. But is there that added pressure uh, for a guy like Peck if he does get the start, uh, knowing that he's probably going to be on a short leash because the other guy's been that, uh, that good as well? Yeah, it's a great point. And it's, uh, this is a tough situation, I think, for, for John Hines. And I think for any of these coaches that have the, you know, the, the, the pair of goaltenders that both these teams do is, is who, who, do, who are you going to pick? What are you going to base your decision on? Um, at certain parts of the season, both guys, Pecorino came out of the gates. He was unbelievable early. He went at 8-0-2 to start the season and really covered up a lot of defensive, uh, you know, miscues the guys were making and they weren't sharp, which later ended up catching up to the team. And then at the end of the season, before it shut down, you know, UC Saros had playoffs started on time and when it was supposed to, he would have been the guy starting goal, getting his first 
playoffs start. So they have a really tough decision. And I know a lot of it is going to be based on what they see now in training camp, uh, who's moving forward. I think it's going to be very telling to see how John Hines disperses the goalies for the exhibition game. Uh, we play Dallas here coming up uh, shortly. So it'll, that, that'll be a really telling sign for me. But I, I honestly don't think anything's been decided in that regard. Um, and I think that's, you know, a, a, such a huge decision. And like you said, Nasher, I think the leash is going to be a lot shorter on goaltenders, especially in a best of five. You don't have the, the luxury of, uh, you know, those one or two games to get a guy going if, if he's your guy. Um, I think that, you know, one game and um, decisions are going to have to be made. So it'll be very interesting, but I, I don't have anything concrete for you because I think it's, it's yet to be decided. So let me ask you, Mace, I mean, as a goaltender, I mean, does that play on your mind no matter who starts – if it's you or the other guy, when you're in that, I mean, does that weigh on you knowing that that leash is that short? I mean, how do you handle that? I, I think it does. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, for a guy like Pekka, who's been a starter his entire life, has, you know, had to adjust this season to being the support guy and being ready, you know, when his name's called, when before he was the automatic uh, guy that was going to be going out there every night. And it is tough because – it's not like you have the guys that are playing 60 games and you're going with, you're going to ride this guy no matter what. Everyone's so good now. And the margin for error for goaltender or for, for any team to win a series or get into the playoffs is so little that, you know, as a goaltender, you have to know you might only get one opportunity, you know, for your, for your opportunity to be the guy or, or to, to play in the series. So it does weigh on your mind, but I just, you know, the guys, Nash, you know, it's like the guys are so mentally strong now. I know everybody gets bitten now with a little confidence bug here and there, but uh, these guys are prepared and I think they're ready to go regardless. And, th and they'll be supportive of the other guy uh, as well, whoever wins that job. Um, great question. Uh, lastly, all right, we've done a lot of talking here. Guys are going to be ramped up, ready to go. The intensity and the, the passion is going to be there to start, but is it going to be crisp? What's, what's, give me the key. What's going to be the key to this series? Oh, man, there, there's going to be so many, uh, you know, obviously how the players handle, uh, you know, no fans. I mean, that's something that uh, I don't know if they're talking about it enough. I mean, how do you recreate that energy that playoffs is, is all about? But uh, as far as the on ice stuff, I, I think, you know, you look at Nashville, they have the best D in the National Hockey League. I think that's going to be a big part of it, how the Coyotes manage um, their top four. Uh, they're a big part of their offense, as we all know. Yossi led that Nashville Predators team 65 points. Uh, you know, he's up for the Norris Trophy this year, Ellis uh, as well. But I, I think for me, and, and I touched on it already, but I think in a best of five series, uh, I think that all this time off, almost five months, it's going to be sloppy. The players are going to be trying their hardest. Um, but there's going to be some sl sloppy play. There, there just is. One exhibition game, that, that doesn't cut it. Normally, you have 82 games to get ready for the playoffs, to amp it up. You're rolling in, um, playing your best hockey. That's not going to be the case. So for me, it's going to be all about the goaltenders. I, I think that you're going to need that big save at that big moment. I think there's going to be some mistakes and some miscues um, in front of those goalies. And if those guys and whoever can clean up the mistakes the best is going to win this series, especially early. Yeah, I, I, I really I agree with every, every point you made there. Goaltender's obviously huge. Um, for me, too, I, I think, especially when you look at, you know, the, the Predators, Coyotes, your guys' penalty kill has been a really good weapon for you over the last couple of years. I think you guys have one of the top scoring teams shorthanded, but you guys are so aggressive. Um, and, and, you know, you really put a lot of pressure on other teams' power play. And, and on the flip side of that, the Predators' power play has struggled the last couple of years, and that's kind of been an area – um, that they're really working on. And I think, you know, if you, if you get good goaltending and you can have strong special teams in a short series like this, you have a, a big advantage. And then, you know, I look at your guys' line combinations in training camp. It seems like uh, Tockett's trying to get, you know, a little bit of skill on, on all three of those top lines and try to spread that out. So at any given point, when you're talking about the details and playing crisp defensively, they've got a guy that can go back the other way. And, you know, you guys are really good uh, – a counter team, counter attack team, you play solid defensively, but you have that threat on every line and then you have your fourth line, which is uh, can do some damage too and, and, and lay the body out there. So I think uh, to me, I'm going to go special teams, goaltending, and then uh, just don't make any mistakes, guys. That's about it, but, which is going to be easier said than done. Holy, are you sneaking into our rink? How, how are you getting in the doors? Little, uh, some shirt on there. What, what's going on? I got some little birdies out there in Arizona, Nasher, feeding me some stuff, but it doesn't do me much good. So I hope the, hope the guys, uh, guys are listening too. So. <laughs>
I love it. I love it. Always good chatting with you, buddy. I can't wait to be calling these games. Nice to be uh, talking hockey again. Yeah, this is awesome. Thanks, uh, Tyson Nash, Fox Sports Arizona, Chris Mason, Fox Sports Tennessee, signing off. We'll see you real soon.